And our very own Wayne Madsen is on the hill, right outside the hill in D.C. He's just been at the National Press Club. And he was there covering the historic presentation by current Senator Rand Paul, former Senator Graham, 9-11 Commissioner, and others who have seen the secret 28 pages and what it entails. Walter Jones, the congressman from North Carolina, was also there, frequent guest on this transmission. So joining us is Wayne Madsen to break all of this down. I tell you, Wayne, it's obviously very dangerous what Senator Paul's doing. He's a leader. He's a doctor. He's a family man. He's showing he's bold on the Constitution and Bill of Rights. He's showing that he's nonpartisan when it comes to defending our republic. He's the only senator to actually get up and try to shoot down the Patriot Act and put himself right in the face of the globalist uh, so-called juggernaut. This is true leadership. This is true Americana. And if we don't support this as a people, if we don't admire this, if we don't see this as heroic in the face of incredible tyranny, uh, then we can't get mad at politicians who become statesmen down the road uh, for not doing something. They're blackmailed. They're harassed. They're targeted by the media. They go through all sorts of dirty tricks. you got to be super clean to be able to do what he's doing. And he has really gone up a notch, in my view, from me liking him, trusting him, admiring him, not liking some of the politics he's played, but still knowing he's the best real politician out there in the polls who is a statesman that could beat Hillary Clinton. And he's not a warmonger. He wants to cut off foreign aid. But I tell you, I think he's in real danger now. They're trying to politically assassinate him. I want to get your take on that. But first, you were there for the presentation. We don't have filters here and, and just have to read what, what, what Politico says. Wayne Madsen, former NSA officer, award-winning investigative journalist, best-selling author, West, WayneMadsenReport.com, uh, who broke the Hastert pedo ring news back in 2006 on this broadcast and at WayneMadsonReport.com, uh, joins us now. Wayne Madsen, thank you. Yes, uh, Alex, thanks. Uh, well, the, the uh, press conference was at 10 o'clock today uh, at the Senate uh, uh, Congressional Visitors uh, Center, and uh, Senator Paul led off the uh, press conference uh, announcing his uh, support for a Senate bill to uh, basically urge uh, the president uh, to declassify the 28 pages from the joint congressional report of 2002 on the failures of 9-11. And joining Senator Paul were uh, former uh, Senator Bob Graham from Florida, who was the actual chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, who has, uh, of course, read those 28 pages, uh, was the last final chop authority on those 28 pages uh, with the rest of the report. Uh, and he uh, urged, uh, and he has been urging, uh, uh, the White House. I know he's visited the White House and urged him to declassify uh, the pages. Uh, uh, and um, uh, Senator Paul announced that he has two uh, co-sponsors for uh, this Senate uh, bill uh, that would uh, declassify the 28 pages, and they are uh, Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat of Oregon, and Senator Kristen, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, I should say, of uh, New York. And um, uh, he said if uh, uh, he's also planning on uh, uh, attaching this bill as an amendment to the Defense Authorization Act next week. So Incredible. There, there are two avenues to get this uh, get this through. On the House side, uh, we had uh, Representative uh, Jones, uh, Representative Lynch, and Representative Massey speak. Uh, what we heard from both uh, Senator Paul and uh, the congressman from the House side uh, are that they have resistance uh, from the uh, bipartisan leadership in both houses on getting uh, this through. They, they have very few co-sponsors, and it's quite clear that the leadership, uh, and that's Mitch McConnell in the uh, Senate and John Boehner, the House Speaker, and, and various chairmen of uh, various committees are just uh, trying their darndest to, uh, uh, to block this effort. And um, uh, Senator Paul made, something, uh, made an interesting comment during 
his presentation, he said that the, the Saudi government uh, has expressed support for re releasing the 28 pages. So I asked him a question at the press conference, uh, who in the Saudi government would be in favor of that because the present King Salman uh, was the governor of Riyadh province before 9-11. And I understand from talking to uh, Saudi opposition forces, and these are democratic opposition forces, that... Um, uh, as several Al Qaeda members passed through Riyadh when when Salman was governor of Riyadh on their way to Pakistan and Afghanistan, and they uh, were given uh, logistical support, cash, and a whole lot of uh, support by the present king of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that sounds like in a movie when the guy has a dead body in his trunk and he says, "Sure, search my car." Just trying to play a confidence game. We know from different folks we've had on, like Springman and others from the visa section in Jeddah that they were basically ordered by the CIA to let the 15 of the 19 hijackers in, even though they were flagged as terrorists. But when I get excited about Rand Paul, it's for this reason. He comes out, he points out that they've lied to us about spying on us. He points out it's not been used to stop terror. He points out that we've been helping fund ISIS. He brings up the fact that, hey, Saudi Arabia was allowed in 9-11. Don't claim I'm against national security. Release the information. He really seems to be in their face right now. Uh, a lot of politicians are saying, we don't like your strategy. You're not playing it safe. You know, you're going to lose now for doing this. It doesn't matter. He's doing the right thing. And it shows how alien that is to the mindset in Washington. What do you make of what Rand Paul's doing and taking a leadership role in this? Well, uh, he had, uh, you know, I've, I've covered the politics here for a while. And to hear a, a Democrat like Bob Graham, uh, former governor of Florida and uh, longtime uh, Democratic senator, was the chairman of the um, Senate Intelligence Committee, was actually thanking and praising uh, Rand Paul for his efforts, as, as were uh, the the uh, members from the House side, uh, including uh, Democratic uh, Congressman uh, Stephen Lynch from Massachusetts. I mean, it 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 smells and looks like old fashioned statesmanship, and actually trying to have a free country. Yeah, I I, I was uh, somewhat uh, surprised to see a spirit of bipartisanship at that press conference today. I should also add that there was a. A, Virgin, a Republican Virginia state senator in the audience, and he has uh, also proposed a resolution urging uh, the, the 28 pages. Uh, you know, that's just a sense of the, uh, that would be a sense of the Virginia Senate. Uh, they don't have any authority over that type of thing, but he's introduced a similar uh, resolution in the Virginia Senate. Well, I happen to know Rand Paul for 20 years, and I can tell folks he's the real deal. Uh, they're coming after him more than anybody. I think that for anybody who's smart, folks should know he's then the man to nominate uh, out of the Republican field. Uh, the uh, first lady uh, from there on the East Coast, uh, Miss Lindsey Graham, um, has come out, though, uh, demonizing him, saying he'd be a horrible choice for a Republican nominee. But the word is uh, that uh, Lindsey Graham might be getting ready to run. Well, he has, I think, uh, he's, his announcement, I think, is uh, either he's done it this week or he's planning to do it this week. And, uh, uh, yeah, there's, uh, I, I, would, uh, I would urge uh, some of his opponents to just send people to Columbia, South Carolina. I've heard about him in South Carolina from uh, a well-known uh, journalist for the state newspaper, and that is the record, that's the paper of record in South Carolina, covers state politics in the state capital. So uh, these people are well aware of Miss um, South Carolina's um, um, past, uh, shall we say, exploits in the state. So he's fully compromised. I mean, if he comes out of the closet, th then he wouldn't be as dangerous. We're not attacking him because he's gay. We're attacking no. him because they can blackmail him with the information. And he's a hypocrite because he has sponsored a lot of anti-gay legislation. But the, the, the major thing is if he does come out, he's, of course, not going to be, a, not only will he not be elected president uh, or get the Republican nomination, uh, he probably won't get, win a seat again if he runs for re-election from South Carolina. So this is the dilemma that he faces because of his total uh, hypocrisy. Well, I mean, he thinks he's going to attack Rand Paul. And we're not going to attack him right back. He's got another thing coming. We're committed to this fight. We know he's a dangerous person. We know he represents a dangerous mafia. 
And yes, everybody should recognize we have huevos the size of, you know, bowling balls to even be talking about these issues. But it's time it all comes down. It's time the House of Cards comes down. It's time that all of them, Boehner, all of them that are compromised. What's the, I know you've studied Boehner. And I know he's tied in with Hastert and the rest of, the, of that jolly crowd. Um, what's the dirt they've got on Boehner? I mean, when he's doing stuff that's 87% unpopular, like TPP with his, with his uh, crew, with his state uh, constituency, I mean, they've got to have something big on old Boehner. I know he famously handed out tobacco company checks on the floor of the house in the 90s that was illegal, basically, and then claimed it was legal. But I mean, what else do they have on this guy, the Speaker of the House? Well, I don't want to talk about his drinking because we've had very successful members of Congress in the past who were also alcoholics. So you can't use that. You, that can't be used as any sort of negative uh, when you talk about the past. Uh, and many of these were, you know, they may have been drunks, but they were also statesmen. We talk about former House Speaker Carl Albert and uh, Senate Minority Leader Everett Dirks and and, uh, and then Senate Majority Leader Mike Mansfield. Now, some of them, of course, were in Alcoholics Anonymous, but, but they got the job done. So, yes, of course, Boehner is known as uh, pretty much a, uh, uh, you know, a, um, a lush a fish <laughs> on, on. Yeah, we're basically, yeah, he's, he's they call him Mr. Merlot. He, he likes his red wine. And uh, but I think, uh, you, you know, when you talk about Boehner, you got to talk about the lobbying. Uh, apparently, there was talk about him having an extramarital affair with a with a top lobbyist uh, some years ago. So, yes, there is a taint of scandal there. But uh, and I really think that Boehner did not want to serve another term. Uh, in Congress, apparently he's been promised some big, uh, big job. Uh, he wants to move to Florida. He bought a big house in Florida, so clearly he he's looking at retirement. He so wants he to can, cash in on the looting of America. Yeah, and you know, so he can he can buy the best Merlot after he's retired and play golf all day. Uh, so it sounds like the, his greatest crime then in the club is he's not a pedophile because it seems like you got to be a pedophile to be up at the top uh, these days. Right. I think he, you know, I mean, he's very useful to some people, but I think he's he's a rather aloof uh, uh, speaker. We have to really look at his uh, staff, senior staff members. Uh, uh, and that would be as, as speaker. He has his own staff as speaker. Uh, they're, they're separate from his staff uh, where he represents his district in Ohio. Uh, and also you got to look at some of the committee chairs that he's appointed to these top committees. So I think the problem with Boehner is is his relative aloofness um, and um, from from you know the day to day matters and uh, uh, but but the, the I'm not going to hold the drinking against them because as I say we've we've uh, had in the past uh, well we'd be probably, hypocrites then too so yeah, yeah. let's well, just get real yeah right exactly and uh, but uh, but but I re really want to say that uh, in answer to my question uh, Senator Paul said uh when i asked him i said who specifically in the saudi government because of the uh and i think king salman uh as governor riyadh his name is all over the 28 pages uh and uh he said he he'd have to get you know get that information he couldn't recall who that official was but the word i got uh today was that the reason uh this bill has been totally unsuccessful in, in getting more senate support is because the bush family is putting direct pressure on uh, mitch mcconnell and we know that you know he's the other senator from kentucky and ostensibly uh, you know um, Rand paul and mcconnell uh, they have a sort of a sub mutual supportive relationship uh, politically, and both Republicans from the same state, but that the Bush family and the oil companies and the Saudi lobbyists uh, and the Saudi embassy here is really putting a full court press on making sure. Sure. Well, this for those that don't know, you broke it at the time. It was then in the Miami Herald. It was in the London Guardian. Uh, the Bushes were at a Carlisle Group uh, contractor breakfast that morning in D.C. at the Bin Laden table. George Herbert Walker Bush. Uh, Bush 41 was there eating with them when the attacks took place. They were allowed to all fly out of the country when air traffic was grounded. So right. they don't want this whole Bush-Saudi connection being opened up. And I think knowing Rand Paul in his speech, that was a little bit of a backhand. He's probably been threatened by the Saudis. That was a backhanded threat probably that, oh, and I know you want this released. Like, like right. you know, oh, you really want us to serve a search warrant on you. It's kind of a... 
I think it was more of a snarky remark. Right. It could. It could have been. Uh, I mean, he um, he also said that uh, there's. Uh, by, uh, he's talked about the bipartisan support from uh, various committees, uh, current and former committee chairs, uh, uh, former uh, intelligence uh, agency officials have urged um, this report to be, these 28 pages to be released. But Senator Graham, former Senator Graham, uh, held up another document. Let's talk about that document when we come back. I don't want to get the latest on. The giant gerbil, uh, Dennis Hastert. And your purchase of PrisonPlanet.tv members allows us to have full-time professional journalists. McBreen worked for Scripps Howard News Service and others. Uh, Wayne Madsen's worked for a bunch of you know, big mainline institutions, famous author, uh, written for you name it. We've got all these other great reporters here as well that have worked in TV and radio. And we're hiring more people. I plan to hire about three more camera people, maybe two or three more reporters, investigative journalists, two or three more writers, and then that's it. I don't tend to grow anymore because it's it's a lot to manage. But we just need to be able to have two crews be in different places at one time and still have a crew here to do reports in Austin and in studio. And I've basically got two crews right now. But when holidays come up, I've got one crew. So it's a balancing act. Your support financially is what is allowing it. And for me to be able to hammer out a, a deal to have Wayne Madsen uh, come to work full time, that's five days a week with us as an investigative journalist. And some of the stuff he's got planned is mooey dangerous. It's dangerous because it's important. I mean, we're not playing games here is what I'm saying. I'm not going to go up against the globalist and do it with my mittens on. The gloves are off. We want a free country. We're not going to be enslaved. Fortune favors the bold. To quote John Paul Jones, founder of the U.S. Navy, I have only begun to fight. And that's what it comes down to. So thank you all for being PrisonPlanet.tv members and visiting InfoWarsStore.com. All right, Wayne, we got about three, four minutes left before this segment ends. Uh, you, you said that uh, Senator Graham, um, who was heavily involved in the 9-11 investigation, you name it, He's read the 28 pages that show Saudi Arabia was heavily involved. Our government helped cover it up. That's bombshell right there. He had another document, Wayne Madsen. He, uh, yes, Senator Graham held up another document from the Treasury Department. It was a classified document, and it was about a Saudi organization uh, with strong ties to the Saudi government uh, that funded uh, al-Qaeda and uh, obviously funded some of the hijackers. It, this uh, document was uh, he showed us the document. Uh, it was probably about 90 to 100 pages in length, and he flipped through every page, and every single page was blacked out. Uh, there wasn't one item there that was uh, left open for uh, public view. So he's uh, urged uh, that document as well to be uh, released uh, by the uh, Treasury Department. Does this scare the real perpetrators of 9-11? I, I think uh, when you, from what I understand from people who read the the uh, the twenty eight pages, it, it's not so much what it says in the text. It may be what's in the footnotes and reference material is cited. And think of it as an onion. And when you start peeling back the onion, you get down to different layers, and it opens up uh, you know different avenues for investigation. And that's obvious. Obviously, what the intelligence agencies and the bush family uh and i say bush family we got to think of their extended family the dick cheney's the donald rumsfelds and and whatnot uh don't want this information to see the light of day nor do the oil companies and they're so tied in with them uh that uh, of course have this relationship with the saudi government in closing lane what are they going to do when this ends up coming out, or it's already basically out, defense intelligence says our government's running Al Qaeda. What are they going to do? Well, I, you know, I mean, it's going to, I think, show people that uh, we're we're lied to on a daily basis. And uh, Wayne, hold on, uh, back at sixty. We'll do five more minutes and let you get back to reporting. He's up there on Capitol Hill right Thank now. You for listening. Uh, they also are having an event at the National Press Club. That's how I got that Visit confused. But this was at the Senate press today. area. We'll be back. I'm a former Senator Bob Graham. Who wasn't on the 9-11 Commission? Why was I saying that? I get confused. Uh, so many names, they all mixed together. Uh, with this whole Saudi connection coming out, uh, other points that you were about to add to that, and, and where do you see all this going? Because uh, obviously folks in the military are upset if defense intelligence leaked 
last week, uh, the, and this was confirmed to be a real leak, that indeed the Army said we're ordered to fund al-Qaeda, fund the Salafis, which is al-Qaeda al as well, uh, basically ISIS. I, I mean, this really shows that, that why they're scared of leaks. Yes, and, and then we just had a revelation from the State Department. They admitted that the uh, former head of the Tajikistan Special Forces, trained by uh, Blackwater on a State Department contract, is now a top field commander for ISIS. So here we have yet another uh, uh, fact, uh, factoid that indicates that the ISIL, ISIS is a construct of uh, Western intelligence the Saudis. How the do Turks they think is. they're going to get away with this? Well, I think the fact is that we're seeing more and more of these revelations, and they're being confirmed by the agencies. Of course, the Defense Intelligence Agency tried to worm its way out of that report that you mentioned about uh, that it was the policy to create a Salafist principality in Syria and Iraq to uh, bring down um, Bashar Assad, and ultimately uh, the uh, Iraqi government, which is allied, uh, has very close ties with Iran. Um, but I, I, I don't think we see the resistance now from the agencies. There's people that want to get the truth out. That's really, I mean, that's what, your job was internal security at the NSA. Uh, but, I mean, we see them going after uh, folks like William Benny and Drake and others. But, but you've talked about how they spend a lot of their time now just spying on people in government. But it's not going to work when more and more people just start leaking. They can't stop everybody. We could see leaks at any time that could bring down the globalists. I think that's why they want to uh, have an Internet kill switch and things like that. Well, I, I think we're, we're seeing uh, more people going through more documents like the DIA report, and, you know, whatever the document was that indicated, yes, uh, this guy from Tajikistan, the head of their special forces, was in fact trained by Blackwater. Uh, I think uh, uh, people are getting smart on how, how to go through these documents, whether they're a result of a Freedom of Information Act request or other from other sources. So I think the... Uh, sure. I think, uh, we're getting we're getting better at what we're doing, and it's beyond the spin of sure we created Saddam then he turned on us or we created Bin Laden then he turned on us. No, they are funding these groups whole cloth now and commanding them to engage in war crimes to destabilize the world, then attack the West so they can legitimize the police state. And you know this this is a dead duck politically. It's not going to fly in my view. Right, and, and we had families there today at this press conference. I should mention that. Uh, one one uh, young boy, is 14 years old, was four days old when his father was killed on 9-11. So, uh, the, and, and, the, and the daughter of one of the victims said, we are the children of 9-11. They made a personal appeal to President Obama to release the 28 pages so they can at least uh, have some closure. They say they don't trust their government anymore. And, and that's a theme we heard. We, the children of 9-11, sure. do not trust our own government. All right, Wayne Madsen, great job, WayneMadsenReport.com. Be talking to you more in the next few days about uh, official capacity here at InfoWars. But welcome to the team, buddy. You bet. Thank you. All right, there goes Wayne Madsen reporting from Capitol Hill. You can hear the reporters chattering in the background.